And you guys, the last game of Curse Trials, day one, Group A. It is Kibler versus Tice. We have to fill our last seat from the first group on our final day here. Is it going to be Kibler or is it going to be Tice? Tice, um, Tice has just dropped uh, his second game after winning one. Kibler, after losing his opening game, came back through the loser's bracket. And uh, they're both at one and one. And they're both sporting this warrior. One more warrior has to win today. How about that? Rigged, right? Destined to have a double <laughs> percentage of their win rate. I mean, it's it's going to come down to who has the uh, slightly less bad deck in this scenario. Or, I don't know, maybe Dragon Warrior can turn our opinion. And, and right now, we're just kind of underestimating it. Maybe the second half uh, of the players tomorrow can show us some new stuff. But uh, I'm pretty excited to see. Uh, one of these guys go through. Not only are they both playing Dragon Warrior, but they're both playing Dragon Priest. Yeah. And there are some late game cards in both players' decks, which will lead to some really fun stuff. I'm looking at Nefarian, Anixia. I'm looking at Yoseras. Uh, it's it's going to be a good time. Yeah, should be a pretty good time. That third deck, though, uh, Tice has the Druid and Kibler has the Shaman. So far, we've seen Druid dominate a little bit more. Tice has probably the most experienced playing Druid than any other play in the world. Um, and uh, I feel like Shaman matches up a little bit worse against these uh, like life buffer classes, like the Priest and the Warrior, than Druid does. Druid's more of a mid-range deck, and uh, the Shaman is, is more likely to burn out. We also know that Tice is running Harrison, so um, Tice is also teched much better against Kibler. So I think I think this is Tice's Tice's round to win. But um, well, being hurt, then anything goes, man. Anything goes. <laughs> well, in this case, you know, uh, it's it's pretty much Druid and Shaman goes, and then uh, the rest yeah. kind of follows suit. But we do have some differences with the Druid and the Shaman here. Uh, Tice choosing not to run Shaman, and instead trying to capitalize on other people running Shaman with his Dragon decks, and then Kibler. Doing the same, but trying to catch the druids, which mm. Um, mm. is not working out all too well. No. Uh, mm, so, well, we'll see. We'll see if that ends up working out in the favor. I, I would personally like to see both these guys key warrior, because I think dragon warrior mirrors would be interesting to see, but that's just actually, me. You mentioned how uh, we have to double the win rate of the warrior, but that's actually not true. Technically, one warrior could win, but the other warrior could lose like three times, and the warrior that wins could lose twice before it wins. <laughs> and these You're are right. very yeah. possible. <laughs> yeah. And both both could win. Let's yeah. not also put that out of the equation, Chris. Mm. They both could win independently of each other. Okay. Allow me to dream. All right, well, it is Druid versus Priest. We know it is um, it is Kibler on Priest, as uh, Kibler did not bring a Druid deck to this tournament. My greetings. A good hand if he picks up a dragon. Otherwise, not so much. He has a couple turns. Ooh. He has a one more turn. I think Northshire turn one is reasonable. Is someone injured? The thing that you're very afraid of, though, is... Uh, as a druid player in the past was when you play Norse when you play the Narnassus Aspirant, you were always afraid of a coin villain's chosen, but that's not the possible at all. Um well uh, assuming you know Kibler has honored his commitments. <laughs> oh, that's before. pretty good. Oh yeah. You can actually nice. coin the taunt here. I think that's a reasonable play because yeah. you're not gonna be playing that dragon next turn anyway. So you don't you don't need a coin next turn. And if you don't need a coin next turn and you can play something this turn, you should be yeah. doing that. Looks like uh, Kibler officially has brought in some reinforcements wow. and is playing 2v1 against Tice. Uh, I think Shiro also probably was double checking all the deck lists to make sure that, I must you know, safeguard the there wasn't any yeah. light bombs in Kibler's I wonder place. what happened with Crush. Is this still in there? <laughs> I think they forced him to, to change it after the match. I feel like uh, it gives him an edge, though. Uh, it could, because now he's seen some decks. Uh, he... Yeah, so according to the admin that we're reading in the chat right now, he had to remove it after the series, but it's not like he's had to remove it and can't play with it. He actually has to replace it with another card, because that's what Hearthstone decks force you to do. Mm -hmm. So, it uh, could be just an honest mistake. Maybe he had to replace it with Wisp. That would be pretty funny, in my opinion. 
I do feel like if every opponent was asked if he should replace or keep Crush, every opponent would request him to keep Crush. <laughs> I don't know! Dragon Priest and Dragon Warrior on the other side. Crush might have some legitimate use in those control mm. matchups. I think you're correct in this in this one case. I think you're right. What to do? Alright, in the meantime, guys, taking a look at Tice's hand. Again, he, uh, we lost his webcam because he was having some internet issues. He can, he's just going to try to see what best can stick to the board so he can hit his 7 mana play, or in the best case scenario, 8 mana play. However, Kibler has access to some of uh, the best removal in the game in Entomb, especially if the matchup goes long enough. It's going to be... A, what is what is that going to be? It's going to be like a turn 4 Ragnaros versus a turn 5 coin Entomb, perhaps? <laughs> Yeah, he, he's gonna kill off the uh, Ashman for sure. But I mean, I'd still consider entombing the Ancient of War as well, because it'd be just too big. Yeah, for sure. No, that's definitely happening. Well, hold on, maybe not. Is there a merit for a swipe here? It's a pretty weak swipe. Yeah, I'm looking at it as well. I. Don't, I you would give up your entire board, and then you don't get to develop. I like the Ancient of War a little bit better. Yeah. Coin and Tomb. And Golden and Tomb is freaking awesome. Look at that. No, don't leave me. Is he going to play into Swipe? I guess so. I guess he doesn't have a choice. I mean, the nice thing about playing into Swipe, so to speak, is that if they do it, they only have three more man to develop anything. So you you get proactive on the you get proactive onto the board, which is very good because you have a lot of things to replace it. You have a second Twilight Guardian because mm -hmm. uh, you picked up the Azure Drake, and you have the Worm Rest Agent as well. Mm, swipe works quite well, also because uh, it counters the ball from doing much. Yeah, but now you have a full board clear. Like you can just do whatever you want. It's going to be really good. Brand Bronzebeard has an opportunity to come down as well, so that way your clunky, battle prize following would be really good. Mm. I like it, it. You like it? Yeah. Okay. It, make, it just gives more value to your hand, and it's one of those things, once again, where... Like, whatever you pick up gives you more options. Like, you can play... If you pick up another dragon, you can uh, Azure Drake for two cards, and you can get Worm Rest Agent. Or if you don't have that, you can just play Twilight Guardian, make it a Druid of the Claw. It's, it's like, it's all these different stats buffs is what really gives Druid fits. Uh, here's the problem, though. He has no answer to Ragnaros. Oh, oh. No, I think that's the best case there. I mean, that stops the extra draws from the Azure Drake and the extra, extra stats from the other minions. Yep. That was really good for Tice. Oh, one mana off. Do you drop the second Worm Rest Agent? I guess so. Well. I think we'll see um, potentially a combo here. That is a very clean Force of Nature Savage Roar. Four health spread across everywhere. Yeah. I'm down. Yeah, it's just Ragnaros doesn't really get much value. You get, um, you get a little bit of damage on face, but... Moving your opponent's HP from 26 to 18 with that hand. Ooh, I feel like the Druid's gonna have to draw into card draw. Man, that Blackwing Corruptor is also pretty threatening. Um, but Druid can swipe and play Emperor Thorsan. And Kibler's in this pretty. I like the Wrath. Oh no. Uh oh. I think Wrath on draw might be better. Because it's not a heavy enough card. Swipe is not likely to be uh, very good anymore because there's not that many small minions left in the deck. Yeah, so I like the target removal. Yeah, I like I like the swipe there just because if you draw badly, you can cycle with Wrath. Oh. That's a pretty that's a pretty decent draw, to be honest. Like because now you can still develop that. Oh man! Oh, he has some opportunities to get some really big impact cards. Oh mm, no. <laughs> I was thinking like Sylvanas, Karen Bloodhoof, you know, even Sneasel Shredder. 
There's just so many like really big ones that you can get because Drew is just left top decking and can have big value minions, but Goldus isn't too bad either. Oh, that's bad. Uh, he has the Wrath for one, no no question about it. Mm -hmm. He can still remove the Twilight Guardian. Yep. That's Not good. Not bad either. Oh, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, I think he was looking for Ancient of Lore, but still works. Ooh, he can that double is... tap here if he wants. It would play around uh, Holy Nova. Yeah, I think you can go halfway. You can Living Roots 1, clear it, use the otherwise just 1-1s. One -ones. No, the 1-1s one -ones don't really represent much, though. I think I like the double 3. Okay. If the 1-1s one -ones just get destroyed by the 1-2 your opponent's played. Oh, I was assuming you're gonna kill the one two by doing that, but uh, it, you can't do that if you do the the living room. You're right. Well, we have an interesting predicament for Kibler. Yeah. Kibler Kibler has high value cards, but they're just low impact for the next turn, and he he looks like he's gonna take a lot of damage here. Yeah, I guess the nice thing is that it, Druid has no cards, but the moment Druid picks up something like uh, uh, the Ancient of Lore or even another opportunity to draw like Twilight Drake, it's just going to be really hard to fight back. So, is that lethal? That's it. Yeah, that's, lethal. that's wow. 9 plus 7. Uh-oh. Bad news, and that's game number one. But you know what? Druid was gonna probably sneak a win anyways. Yeah, given I'm the in lineup. That. But I think Kobe can't be too upset given uh, the circumstances of stuff. That's true, but at the same time, I think Kibler's own Shaman, his own third deck, will have uh, uh, probably a harder time uh, working his way around uh, the remainder of Tice's lineup here with Priest, uh, Dragon Priest, and Dragon Warrior of his own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the Dragon. Mirrors are going to be the ones that really determine uh, what happens in this series here. Specifically, though, I think that the the tech choices are going to be the ones that are going to be impactful. Ty mm -hmm. seems to have like the Farseers as a way to the fight against aggro, which isn't going to be as effective against some of the larger minions, but it will be impactful if he can keep the board intact. So I think it's all about the usage of how his tech is going to differentiate from Kibler's. I think another big factor here is the uh, the priest brought by Kibler has the double Entomb, and I don't think we've seen Entomb in Tice's Priest. And in these control right. games, with not many big minions, Entomb is, is, is like the win condition, really. It's extremely powerful. Yeah, and Tomb is definitely that one of the MVPs, I think, of the deck. Assuming you draw it, and assuming you draw the card off the Entomb, but it could go that distance in that. Mm -hmm. One of the things to consider, too, is that there's just a card Trueheart in this deck, so it could be one of those games, Crip, where uh, Warrior Welcome plays to the grand tournament. passive. Uh, so it seems as... It looks like to us, Kibler is the one on the the priest. Well, what's interesting to me is so. that because huh, I thought Kibler ran the Anixia. Probably. They're both running Anixia. You think Anixia is that common for both decks? Um. Well. They're, they're both running six activators off of dragons. It just means you need a lot of dragons. And when you when you look at the, the dragon list, uh, yeah, Nyx is, Nyx is pretty decent. Okay. Well, it, it is pretty interesting that both of them chose to run Anixia. Very cool. Because, again, it's a card that you don't normally see in today's metagame, or even for a long time. It made a brief appearance in a token druid deck. Uh, it looks like there's no great way out of this. I think you're probably just playing the um, the Corruptor. You can maybe fine. Corruptor the 3-2. No, 
kill the, the minion that has the most health for priest. Plus the taunt will make things more complicated for trades in the future. Okay. Uh, next turn you have access to convenient um, stuff. Like you have bash, hero power, and shield slam. And you can piece together good removal against a few different targets with a lot of health or even a little bit of health. I think we're going to be welcome to the grand tournament next turn. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's looking like that's definitely an option. Uh, it depends on what Kibler wants to develop here as well. Mm -hmm. But I anticipate that he probably plays the Twilight Guardian because that puts the biggest stop on protecting his Blackwing Technician. And the, 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 the Dragon Priest is completely predicated on being able to establish a board that can uh, leverage the Priest Hero Power. So you just want to keep these minions on as much as possible. You don't want to trade a pos uh, if, if you can avoid trading and losing your minion, you, you just want to choose that line. Even 3 ones, healed up to 3 3 and etc. Mm hmm. Ooh, pretty tough spot though. Uh, well, you can fire war axe, bash, and shield slam for board clear. That's, I think that's probably the better option because again, priest can't use its hero power effectively. Then uh, you you can keep the health on the blackwing corruptor, but I guess he feels that with shield slam in the hand and Justicar inevitably going to build his armor count, shield slam becomes much higher premium removal. Yeah. All right, all these like super small minions, they're going to do just fine at uh, oppressing this board. It's He's so going to have to get something more, though. Like, the, these North Shires need to get some kind of value. If the North Shires just mm. die and Kibler gets like a, a bad draw or two, uh, he's just going to fall behind based on the fact that he doesn't have any solid minions. Exactly. And again, Priest has no use of its hero power at all right now. Is someone injured? Unless it wants to heal the 5 1. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Alright. Go with I mean, this rev. It helps you get cards in. And with this, hopefully, one Northshire cleric survives, giving Kibler the ability to continue to draw cards. But I don't think it'll survive at all, especially not with that black No. Draw. No chance. That corruptor's excellent. Wow. And he kept the Blackwing Corruptor alive for his opponent. I'm healing it. <laughs> well, yeah. You can heal it again next turn. <laughs> oh, man. Completely punished. Yeah, uh, this is not looking very good for Kiblin right now. Yeah. Uh -oh. oh, no. This is not what you want to be playing right now. This is, this is when you get the Pit Snake. <laughs> you don't even need a Pit Snake. It's bad anyway. Let's see it. His other option is to play the Blackwing Technicians, but though, though that thing gets bullied pretty easily. I don't know if you want a defender of that either. Yeah. Mm. Well, if you assume your opponent has nothing, Technician Argus works out okay. <laughs> sure. It's pretty reasonable. You see, by playing this, you know Bash and Fiery War Axe has been used, so he, he can't conveniently remove this very easily unless he drew the other copies of it. I really like the Emperor here. Really like it. You, you, like, you're almost guaranteed for a two-turn Emperor, and if it doesn't get a two-turn Emperor, it's probably going to get like Entombed, and you're okay with that as well, because usually a card that's Entombed is drawn much later in the game. And much later in the game, an Emperor would actually suck. Oh, he gets to keep a bigger board. Well, that's gonna probably work out. Oh, there is Entomb! Right is the board good enough to bait it? I'm not sure that it is. No, these are definitely not the targets you want to Entomb at all. Even though... Sometimes you do need to, in the stages where you would die if you just leave them on board. But you're looking for higher priority targets, and you know that your opponent has like bigger minions. It's a dragon control warrior deck. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I think he's gonna pass I after this play. And that means the you have a couple options as the warrior. You can either trade, trade, and play Onyxias, or you can start gathering Justicar value and shield slam something for six. 
Mm, that seems pretty good. Interesting. Man, there's there's definitely like a few lines here that you can take here for for Tice. Mm. The weaponsmith is too mana inefficient. You got to play something bigger than that. Welcome yeah, but I was thinking about what you were saying of like how long will you hold on to Thorson? Um, and there's definitely a, a line you could have taken as well with Thorson. I do like the build the board uh, mentality though, because like you were saying in the very beginning of the cast, without Light Bomb, and now that you, you saw a Holy Nova, Priest is going to struggle to get stuff done. Oh man. So that's Good. one of the best uh, 1 2 cards you can ask for in this situation if you're Kibler. Pit Snake! Pit Snake! Pit Snake! No, I'm gonna say Blood In. Pit Snake! That's on the other side of stuff. Pit Snake! Whoa! Oh, it's not Pit Snake, but it's the worst possible Some thing after Pit Snake. Yeah, it is. We've all been there. Uh, oh. Weaponsmith and the Emperor here is pretty good to just control the state of the board. I really like Onyxia, though. Yeah, because like, okay, if, if you Anixia, he has to trade into your 5-2, right? So, that's still fine, you just finish it with Whelps next turn. Yeah, that's a good point. And then you have a lot of proactive, like, damage on the board. Mm. The nice thing, though, is that you get to develop Anixia with something else as well. So you improve your mana efficiency over the course of two turns. Alright, well, very similar play here. And the Entomb! Yeah, but... He's taking a lot, a lot of damage right now. Well, I would assume that uh, Kibler has two Entombs in this Priest deck. Most likely, but... He's already played one Holy Nova, and I don't imagine he has much else in terms of board clears. Second Holy Nova is probably it. Um, I don't think you run Pyromancer normally. I th well, Skaka did run the Pyromancer back at BlizzCon last Someone's year. Someone's got Pyromancer. I think it's actually Tice. I think Tice is running Pyromancer in his priest. Okay, Kibler plays. Oh, he draws the Onyxia. Is it you know what he can do? Him, I think Kibler also plays Nefarian. And Nefarian can draw a lot of spells which give access to board clears. Mm -hmm. So there's I'm, I'm looking at like the one damage AoEs, I'm looking at Brawl. You got you gotta believe, Crip. I think I would have played the Armor Smith. I don't think the armor is that consequential, and ultimately, more damage on the board. Uh, than than doing this. Yeah. No, this is this is much more damage. So. Oh. Yeah, I definitely like this. I mean, this is actually the correct play here. You just put so much pressure on your opponent, and it didn't look like you had a board clear last turn. 18 damage on board. And that's going to be it. So it looks like Tyson jumps up to a 2-0 lead. Kibler tossing out an emote, but it's going to wrap it up. And the warrior is won. The warrior has increased its win rate. Uh, and if Kibler loses one more time with Priest, for example, uh, the Dragon Warrior doubled its win rate. So, <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Tyson's final deck is Priest. Um... I feel like the Priest deck probably matches up quite poorly against Kibler's Priest deck because the tech choices favor anti-aggro rather than control. And I don't think either deck can put down enough pressure to uh, you know, speed anything other than a control game. So I think Kibler should probably just queue up with Priest again. Why not? But uh, he does have a very long climb here. I think both the Shaman and the Warrior are going to struggle a bit against the Priest. And I do believe it is the Priest that has Pyromancer, as well as Harrison Jones Life once again. The right, the Harrison Jones, definitely the right call there, because um, he did it against Anisiac. So, uh, not going to be really impactful in the Priest mirror, but you know, a couple of these interesting tech choices will be the Great. ones that differentiate them. Remember that Tice has things like Farseer, Kibler has like the Defender of Argus. Uh, I wonder what cards like Museum Curator are going to be able to dig out too. Some of those cards that uh, might be available could be super problematic. Mm -hmm. 
All right, let's see what the exhibit has for us. Oh, Major Domo. I don't think that's the right card, but Toshley will probably make a pretty big impact. Yeah, Toshley is great body. Uh, has you know spare parts which are pretty relevant with a lot of the things. You can add a taunt. You can get that extra damage in to keep it out of range for Shadow Word Death or Pain. Um, well, he hasn't picked one yet, so okay. No, you think he's really picking Major Domo? I mean, against Priest, that's probably Major one of the Domo. classes that you can get away with. Yeah, Major Demo is crazy good if your opponent never has any burst whatsoever. Are you and um, me? yeah, that's that's where we're at right now. Actually, I think. I mean, it's one of those things where you have to think. If you don't pick it against Priest, who, what class would you ever pick it against? I guess the answer is you never pick it, but... Well, yeah, not all cards are created equal in the world of Hearthstone. then. <laughs> what, what about the, uh, the play where you play Major Domo into their Sylvanas so that they steal it and then you can kill them? Yeah. <laughs> A few times. Well, right now, this is typical of a Dragon Priest matchup where you basically have a bunch of minions with a lot of health and small attack just keep bumping into each other. Uh, and then the the big defining things are like how you can swing the board and grab a bunch of tempo. Uh, Cabal Shadow Priest is really good. You know, Surprising Defender of Argus might be one of the big MVPs here mm -hmm. um, to really put a strong minion on the board. I must consider... Because the difference uh, between keeping these minions at one health and, and dead is just night and day. Yeah. I think attacking might be a good idea there. I guess not. I think attacking... Um, Whoa! I think attacking plays around Holy Nova just fine. Dude, that Shadow of Pain is such a crazy draw. Because um, now you can Shadow of Pain, trade into the board, and then... Play the Schnorshire Cleric, Coin, and Heal. And that gives you a card. That gives you board initiative. And you're still also safe from Holy Nova. Oh my goodness. That is nasty. Killer has only the Azure Drake to play. Which uh, isn't very good for 5 mana, but it's also his last dragon right now. It's like, what if Kibler played Defender of Argus last turn? I don't know. Maybe it wouldn't have changed anything. Probably wouldn't have. Considering that his... But, you know, that shower pain was just so crazy. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Yeah. Alright, well... Uh, Bran. Uh, Bran into... I, I guess... The power. Nothing else. Like, Dragon... Uh, the Blackwing Technician becomes a 4-6, but you're just falling too far behind the board, and one of the ways you could climb back in the past was, like, maybe Light Bomb, but there really isn't such a thing anymore. Yeah, and, um... Killing off the Taunt just makes it so Tice can apply more pressure after getting Cabal, which is exactly what happens. I don't think Tice actually cares that his North Shot was stolen. Uh, I think he's just playing the pressure game from this stage. <laughs> well, he definitely doesn't care now. Sure, I'll just get a new girlfriend. <laughs> he could the... just clear completely. Yeah, definitely Whoa. go for that. No. I was thinking of uh, Power Word Shield, trade the five. Hmm. Uh, well, I think this is still reasonable, for sure. Um, you, you, that way you keep the most health onto the board. And ultimately, more health means stronger abilities to pick up future trades as well. Because, you know, Dragon Priest doesn't have access to a lot of, like, burst heals. It doesn't really often run Flash Heal or Light of the Naru, um, or Circle of Healing. So, I think, if you can try to conserve health where you can, I guess Farseer is one of those exceptions. He's gonna get two Farseers, I believe. Uh, yeah, looks like it. Man, what a board here from Tice. And Kibler looks like he's on his last turn here in the tournament. Well, he gets the Super Argus here, which is pretty good. Look at that. Oh, man. Actually, I spoke too soon. You're right. I didn't, I, I didn't see the, the brand with the Argus hyper value. 
Uh, yeah, Tyus is going to need a little bit more to get past this. But he can pick up Shadow or Death. Uh, he could pick up some kind of way to clear with a few removal pieces. Hmm. Let's see. How much damage can you really push out here? Not not too much, unfortunately. No. You can probably draw first, too, just in case you get, like, Holy Nova, maybe? Oh, he's going to do it with the Drake. Okay. That's also reasonable. Oh, oh. my. Holy Nova. I don't think that would have... Would have been... Would have been lethal? I don't think I don't so. know, but it would have been insane. No, because he doesn't have the spell power. If he had the spell power on the Holy Nova, it would have been, you know, just absolutely bonkers. But as a result, uh, he ha he doesn't, and say he's just going to play board clear. Brand goes down once again. Toshly for the freeze effect? Possibly? Uh, no, you can not well. lost the Blackwing Corruptor. Yeah, the Corruptor's good. You just can't play anything else with it, really. You'd have to just heal yourself, but... Yep. And that consider. means Tice would be a couple of d damage off lethal, I believe. Yeah, he's two damage or one mana off. Oh, one, one damage because of the spell power, right? Oh, no, no, two damage, right? Yeah. So... Uh, I guess he already uses both Holy Smites as well. Okay. Wow. Really proactive to try to kill off that Azure Drake. Avoid any opportunity for your opponent to kill you with uh, spell power. Makes sense too, because this trades into the best into the board. Mm -hmm. Power Word Shield first. No See, Dragon yeah. is, is the thing, yeah. Hmm. And if they pick up a dragon, dragon. It's, it's a big deal. It does not. No. You could also heal to draw a card as well. I wouldn't mind that. that belongs in a he just wants more stuff on the board. My work is paramount. Okay. Also reasonable as well. I mean, he he's, can just pick and choose however he wants to end this game. Wow. Spell damage, Holy Nova. But, um... No, it's Just not going to do it right now. Really short. Feels flame strike. <laughs> Different scenario. It had four damage to everything. It actually might be like I wonder. Toshly time, right? Yeah, I think it is Toshly time. I think Toshly does better than the uh, the Holy Nova here. And Holy Nova is, is just going to get better and better because Thice is obviously going to keep going face and keep playing stuff. Mm hmm. Oh, if he had two Holy Novas, that would have been a different story mm -hmm. from the very beginning. Because he could have Holy Nova twice. So he ha he's going to kill this off and play Nova? Or is he not? He's just going to heal and play the like the dragon. That's going to mean a card draw for Tice because of the way the sequence works. And that's also going to be the game. Yeah, that's uh, game. Really valiant effort here by Kim. Way but game. Oh, see, there it is, the Pyromancer. He does have the Pyromancer. Uh, 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 I, I thought he did. Uh, just got to verify it there. And uh, I think that will matter. Um, because Tice will advance. Tice will be our last seed for the final day of the Curse Trial Tournament. And uh, I think that Pyromancer is going to mean a pretty big edge against future Shaman players. Yeah, uh, really scary tech that's included to kill off some of that aggro. And again, a good nod from Tice to realize that he needs to balance his deck with uh, killing off those shamans, killing off even the early game living roots from Druids. Like, mm -hmm. those things can be pretty problematic. So, uh, a, a nod to Tice for have some pretty solid deck building. And, uh, you know, Killer also shows some pretty fun stuff today. You know, I'm not going to be mad at, you know, whenever a guy wants to bring some hungry dragons to the table. <laughs> Those are but no fun. druid. Oh, but no man. druid. The ultimate uh, decision that could have compromised him, but ultimately it wasn't the druid's fault. He just he just lost three games with his priest deck this series, right? Yeah, and I think he had some decent matchups in there. I think he was favored against the warrior. I think he was favored against the priest as well. It just didn't happen for Kibler. And uh, well, maybe next time. Maybe next time, indeed, guys. We are done with day number one. It was quite the. Uh, it was quite the sprint. We just went through every match. 
Uh, not many long breaks at all. It's kind of back to back. Tomorrow promises to be pretty much the same exact thing. We have winners uh, round one, starting off with RDU versus Firebat. Uh, that's going to be pretty cool to see if uh, either of these guys got something unique. Um, I, I heard some interesting stuff about the decks for Group B. Uh, then we have Savitz versus Kalento, Oskaka versus Super JJ, and Life Coach versus Zelay. Uh, th- uh, out of those eight players, four will advance. So uh, we're done. Uh, Crypt, do you have anything you want to say before we wrap up? Nope. Uh, just if you guys enjoyed the format, if you guys enjoyed the rest, make sure to tune in tomorrow as uh, it will be uh, a lot of the same, but uh, the differences should be pretty spectacular. Cool stuff. 11 p.m. PST here on uh, Amaz's channel. Thank you so much for everybody who tuned in for the entire time. You guys rock. Appreciation also to the sponsors of Geek Fuel and the Curse Network. Uh, also, a big shout out to Hearthpone for uh, you know th- their support. Also, being within the Curse Network, uh, good stuff there. Thanks so much for everybody watching. We'll see you guys next time to see who is going to be in the finals of the Curse Trials.